This lecture is about chapter 11 of the book of Mechanics of Materials by Beer and Johnson. The topic of the chapter is Energy Methods. Previously, uh, in chapters before this, we have extensively studied about the concepts of stress and strain. We have drawn stress strain diagram. For different types of materials, for ductile and for button materials. We have discovered relationships between stress and strain. We have discovered relationships between load and deformation for different types of loading and different types of shapes. Now a very important concept uh, which is going to be discussed in this chapter is energy methods. So after stress and strain, the next important concept is energy or strain energy strain energy okay why is it called strain energy because we have studied concepts of stress and strain so why not stress energy why is it called strain energy or why what is strain energy actually before that we need to recall our concept of energy energy is a is a ability of material to do work uh, it can be stored in the material or in a structure uh, in different forms the energy can be produced uh, actually the energy is kind of work it can be stored in a material uh, it can be released by a system it can be stored by a system so strain energy is a kind of energy that is stored by materials due to strain caused in the structures or in the materials. For example, I have a bar subjected to load P, axial load in this case. If the initial length of the bar is L and after deformation, or after tensile load the length is increased there is a change in length delta L so actually there is strain this change in length is actually deformation and here is an applied load P so whenever we applied, apply load and it causes deformation, we call it the product of load and displacement is called work. So this work is actually, uh, this work is stored in the material in a form of energy which is called strain energy because this work has caused strain in the material strain equal to del L divided by L so in this chapter we will discuss the strain energy in detail strain energy caused due to axial loading strain energy caused due to bending loading and strain energy caused due to shear loading so let us discuss in detail uh, strain energy in the materials again here we are considering a uniform rod which is subjected to a slowly increasing load uh, in this figure it is given a load P is applied on the uniform load uh, uniform bar which has caused an increase of length equal to X okay the work done by this load P to elongate this uh, rod by a small length dx is given by this work will be du equal to p dx okay total deformation is x so for a small deformation dx energy stored or the work done by the uh, load p is equal to du this u is capital remember we will use another u which will be small u this capital U is actually the strain energy. Okay. 
what is this u uh, sorry uh, du equal to p dx if we integrate this expression it will be equal to integral of p dx from 0 to any distance x1 in this figure we can see for any distance x1 if you want to find uh, strain energy stored by the material or by the bar up to any other distance x2 so you can measure again x2 as well so here from 0 to x1 integral of p into dx is equal to capital U which is a, which is actually the total work done and it is also called strain energy stored by the uniform rod subjected to load p okay this is uh, this strain energy is actually area under the load deformation curve this uh, diagram which is shown here it is it is for a ductile material so if we have a material which is linear elastic uh, like in this figure so strain energy can be uh, can be found very easily because area under the curve will be simply a triangle so for a case of linear elastic deformation linear elastic deformation strain energy this one is simply area under a triangle so it is integral of p dx from 0 to x1 p is load as per Hooke's law because it is a linear elastic material uh, linear elastic deformation so as per Hooke's law we can use p equal to kx where in this case uh, sorry k is um, elastic constant a uh, Hooke's law constant so we can write it as kx dx 0 to x1 or it can be written as if we integrate x it will be x square by 2 so it can be 1 over 2 kx1 square this is strain energy for linear elastic material where k is uh, stiffness of the material and x1 is the deformation further we can write again it is 1 over 2 k x1 into x1 this k x1 is actually load p1 so this load p1 at x1 so u can be rewritten as 1 over 2 p x1 what is 1 over 2 p x1 it is simply area under this triangle if we use geometry we can simply find area under the triangle triangular load uh, sorry this uh, linear line which is the triangle 1 over 2 p1 x1 so what is strain energy strain is energy is simply area under the load deformation curve if the lower deformation curve is a ductile curve so you have to find it uh, using integration or using different geometric methods if it is simply a linear elastic deformation so it will be a triangle and it is very easy to find area of triangle so simply we have to find area under the lower deformation curve in order to calculate strain energy stored in a material okay moving further uh, strain energy actually uh, here the strain energy is not simply material property 
because it also depends upon the geometry of the of the bar of the structure so we want to find a material property uh, where there is no role of geometry actually so we want to eliminate the role of geometry from this uh, expression so let us divide strain energy by volume of the of the bar or of the structure so in this case if we uh, want to eliminate this effect of size or geometry we will use the concept of strain energy density i am calling it small u small u is strain energy density which is strain energy per unit volume so we have divided it by volume if there is a large volume there will be larger strain energy if there is a small volume it will store smaller strain energy so dividing the strain energy by the volume of the bar or of the structure we will eliminate the effect of geometry of the material uh, of the structure so this small u is strain energy density strain energy density it is independent of the effect of size okay capital u was pdx we are dividing it by volume so let us divide it by area and length product of area and length is volume again p over a is stress P over A stress sigma and dx by dl change in length sorry dx by l change in length per unit original length is actually strain. So what is small u or strain energy density? It is integral of sigma into strain. Or we can say it is area under the stress strain curve we draw a stress strain curve for ductile material or for a brittle material so area under the curve it is small u okay so the total strain energy density resulting from the deformation is equal to area under the stress strain curve up to epsilon 1 epsilon 1 means you are uh, this uh, up to the strain you are interested in for example you are interested in a strain up to e1 epsilon 1 so you are going to calculate here you want to calculate total strain energy density stored by the material up to the fracture so it will be under the total stress strain diagram okay as the material uh, for example in this uh, diagram uh, it is a stress strain curve for a rectile material here is a strain epsilon 1 so area under the stress strain curve up till strain epsilon 1 is the strain energy density stored by this material okay as the material is unloaded the stress returns to zero but there is a permanent deformation if we unload from this point since this is a ductile material and the deformation is plastic at this point so the material will not come back to zero zero it will recover up to some certain point but the, it will not come back to its original position because there is a ductile there is a plastic deformation so it will return to zero stress state but not a zero strain state there is a permanent deformation which is equal to this permanent deformation is equal to epsilon p permanent deformation we also call it residual strain okay it will remain in the material only the strain energy represented by the triangular area is recovered so this dark triangular area this much energy is recovered by restoring the material up to epsilon p strain this recovered strain energy uh, the remainder of the energy spent in deforming the material is dissipated as heat 
okay so whenever we deform a material and then we undeform it you can feel a small amount of heat on the surface uh, even if you try it with your hand you can uh, feel it sometimes that there is a small heat that heat is actually the remainder of the energy spent in deforming the material okay so in this slide we have established or we have introduced another concept which is called strain energy density strain energy density is actually strain energy per unit volume of the uh, of the structure why we divide strain energy by volume because we want to eliminate the effect of geometry of the structure so by in order to eliminate the effect of uh, geometry we have divided the strain energy by volume and the new term strain energy density is actually a material property it does not depend upon geometry and it is equal to area under the stress strain curve stress strain are material properties so area under the stress strain curve is also material property so remember we will use two types of u's in this uh, chapter a capital u and a small u the capital u is strain energy and small u is strain energy density okay let us move further we will continue the topic of strain energy density okay if we have a stress strain diagram for a ductile material like this one and here is a rupture point the end point of the stress strain curve there is a strain equal to epsilon r which is rupture strain if we consider the area under this diagram until rupture point we have fixed this epsilon 1 equal to epsilon r in this case this whole area under the curve it is modulus of toughness is called modulus of toughness so how we can define modulus of toughness modulus of toughness is the strain energy density r you can say the strain energy per unit volume absorbed by a material until the rupture point again i will define it what is modulus of toughness modulus of toughness is the strain energy per unit volume it is very important strain energy per unit volume absorbed by a material until rupture point so the if, uh, the definition of strain energy uh, sorry the definition of uh, modulus of elasticity sorry modulus of toughness should now be very clear you have uh, uh, studied this uh, definition of modulus of toughness or this term modulus of toughness before this in your laboratories maybe or in some other courses but you may not be uh, you you may not know the actual physical meaning of this term first, uh, modulus of toughness it is actually the strain energy per unit volume stored by a material until rupture point so how we can define toughness now toughness is actually resistance to rupture the more a material has the ability to store energy the more it has resistance to deformation or to uh, to failure so if a material has larger uh, modulus of toughness it has more toughness actually it has more ability to store the energy before toughness point is or uh, before the toughness of the material is achieved just like a, a, a water glass or any uh, jar it has capacity to store fluids so the larger the jar is or the larger the glass is the more it has the ability to store uh, water or other fluids similarly in materials the stronger a material is the more it has ability to store energy before failure the failure may be permanent deformation or it may be fracture okay 
So the energy per unit volume required to cause a material to rupture is related to its ductility as well as its ultimate strength. This much energy stored by the material until rupture point, uh, energy per unit volume, it is related to ductility of the material as well as the ultimate strength of the material. Okay. If the stress remains within proportional limit, in this, uh, in the earlier case, uh, in this case we have studied, uh, we have discussed uh, about a ductile material until rupture point. But now let us consider the stress is until yield point only, or proportional limit only. So the line is almost a straight line, and the area under the curve is simply a triangle. Area of a triangle and we call this area uh, uh, equal uh, uh, this area as modulus of resilience so what is modulus of you may have uh, heard about this term before but let us physically know what is modulus of resilience modulus of resilience is the strain energy per unit volume stored by a material until yielding point or until proportional limit and then we can define resilience as well. Resilience is resistance to yielding. Similarly, uh, earlier we have discussed toughness is resistance to rupture. So now we can say resilience is resistance to yielding or permanent deformation. Okay, how can we find resilience? Uh, mathematically, we can derive an expression for it as well, modulus of resilience. Okay, before this, if you want to find modulus of toughness, you have to find area under this curve. Since this is not a known area, we have to integrate it into small parts and then we can calculate this area. But it is very easy to find this area for modulus of resilience. It is a triangle, so it is easy to find the area of triangle. Since small u, or strain energy density, is equal to integral of stress and strain, from zero to any strain, for example, epsilon one. Okay, since for until proportional limit, we can use Hooke's law. So let me use Hooke's law here. Uh, Hooke's law say that stress is equal to modulus of elasticity into strain. Okay we can uh, integrate strain with d epsilon so it will be 1 over 2 e into square of epsilon since the integral starts from 0 to epsilon 1 so here it will be epsilon 1 okay again we can write it as 1 over 2 e epsilon 1 into epsilon 1 since it is square so we can multiply epsilon 1 with epsilon 1 or we can say it as we can call it as 1 over 2 sigma 1 into epsilon 1 this e into epsilon 1 is uh, equal to sigma 1 as per Hooke's law so 1 over 2 uh, sigma 1 into epsilon 1 again epsilon 1 can be rewritten as uh, as per Hooke's law epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 over e so this expression can be written as sigma 1 square divided by 2 e this is called modulus of uh, sorry um, strain energy density for uh, elastic materials are in in the elastic range Okay, the maximum limit of elastic range is equal to sigma y. The maximum uh, stress of elastic range is sigma y. So, if we put it maximum, so we can call it u y equal to sigma y square divided by 2 e. This is equal to area under this triangle, which is modulus of resilience. So modulus of resilience can be denoted with small u y strain energy density 
or strain energy per unit volume stored by a material until yielding point it is equal to sigma yield square divided by 2 e e is modulus of elasticity modulus of resilience okay we will use this expression frequently uh, while solving the numerical problems and also we will use this expression uh, whenever we deal with uh, elastic deformations while calculating strain energy density okay <coughs> moving further the next topic is strain energy density for normal stresses up till now we have just defined strain energy and now for normal stress when a material is under normal load for example here is a uh, in this diagram uh, here is a non-uniform bar area is changing with the length and it is under a load P axial load P and we want to find strain energy density as the volume is constantly changing we want to divide this uh, we will divide this structure into small volumes uh, differential volumes small u is equal to limit where a small volume tends to zero we want to divide it into very small volumes where delta v is very small number du by del u by del v what is del capital u it is strain energy by volume strain energy per unit volume is equal to strain energy density okay we can write it as differential and if we integrate this expression or we can write it as d capital u is equal to small u into dv we can write it rewrite it as cap, uh, if we integrate it as uh, it can be written capital u is equal to integral of small u into differential of volume this is capital u is strain energy or total strain energy okay since we are studying only elastic strain energy so we will use uh, the term uy until yield limit only so for strain energy density less than u y sorry i will write it as u y like small y is used for direction capital y is used for yielding okay so uh, we can write this uh, above expression again okay for if u is less than u y in the previous slide we have seen that u y is equal to the uh, sigma y square divided by 2 e so we will write uh, we will uh, put it into the above expression capital u will be sigma y square divided by 2 e into dv okay now this is elastic strain energy because we have used yield stress here earlier it was total strain energy so this is elastic strain energy okay since this is an axial loading case uh, for axial loading for axial loading sigma is always equal to load divided by area and here if we see here is an area a and we have divided if we divide it into small lengths dx so volume will be dv this volume dv will be
dv will be equal to area into dx volume of this disk okay so let us put sigma equal to p over a in this expression and uh, sorry uh, yes and uh, let me keep it as general sigma my x okay putting these expressions here above x is just for direction okay so small u or sm uh, strain energy density becomes sorry capital u or strain energy it becomes integral of p square divided by 2 a e into dx p over a so it becomes p square over a square and here is another a so a will be cancelled with a it becomes p square over 2 a e dx this x is actually length so integral starts from 0 to length this is to, uh, elastic strain energy for a non-uniform bar under axial loading if the bar is uniform if there is no change in area so area is constant we can keep it outside the integral sign e is also constant it will be outside the integral sign p is constant it will be outside the integral sign so only dx can be integrated it will be equal to x so, and by putting x equal to l so for a uniform bar for uniform rod The above expression will be, we will remove the integral sign, we will resolve the integral, it will be p square l over 2ae. So, in the uh, exercise problems, if we, uh, if we got to solve a uniform rod, we will use this expression. And if we got to solve a non-uniform bar, we will use this expression to calculate strain energy. Uh, under normal stresses or normal loading moving further to the bending loading let us consider a beam under uh, subjected to bending load in case of bending sigma is equal to m y over i remember this expression we have earlier studied it in chapter number four okay since bending load uh, uh, bending is uh, uh, so okay we are considering uh, normal deformation only sigma due to bending so u is equal to for shear we will uh, uh, move further to the next topic uh, again okay u is equal to sigma x we have earlier discussed this Okay, since sigma x is normal stress in x direction, for beam sigma x is equal to m y over i, putting it here, we will get it m square y square over 2 e i square into dv. Okay, earlier we have discussed that dv is equal to dx into a or I can say dv is equal to dx into integral of dA again it will be a by putting dv into dv equal to dx integral of dA in the above expression u will be capital U it will be integral now we are writing the integral in, in terms of x so m square y square over 2 e i square uh, okay this a is also here so I am putting its integral here 
integral over area into dx okay moment does not depend upon area e does not depend upon area i is constant so i will rewrite this expression as integral of zero to length moment square divided by 2 e i square into integral of y square d a to d x this integral of y square into d a is equal to moment of inertia you have studied it in your engineering physics so this is actually equal to i and this i can be cancelled with this i here this expression can be rewritten as integral 0 to l m square over 2 e i into dx this general expression can be used to calculate elastic strain energy elastic strain energy for bending loading okay here if we have a special case like this one for an end loaded cantilever beam end loaded cantilever beam this is a special case if I section it here to find the moment so moment will be equal to minus px putting it uh, in the expression okay this length is x putting it in the above expression so it will be u equal to p square x square divided by 2 e i into dx if we integrate x square with respect to x so it will be p square l cube divided by 2 e i okay so this expression can be used for end loaded cantilever beams only if we have a problem having an end loaded cantilever beam a cantilever beam with a load at the free end so we can directly use this expression to calculate elastic strain energy and if we have another any other beam we will have to use this expression and for that we will find moment in that specific beam for example in this beam we will find moment in this section in this section in this section in this section wherever it is uh, needed to find elastic strain energy we will section the beam there if it is asked to find total elastic strain energy so we will section beam at different points we will find its elastic strain energy at different sections and then we will add the corresponding elastic strain energies to find the total strain energy okay moving further our next topic is strain energy for shearing stresses again it is elastic strain energy actually in this subject we are studying in this chapter we are studying elastic strain energy only okay so if a if an element is under shear load tau xy uh, we are considering a planar shear stress two dimensional okay so previously we saw that strain energy density small u is equal to stress into uh, integral of stress into strain so here again it will be integral of shear stress into shear strain shear stress into shear strain in two dimensions it is a planar element from zero to any value of shear strain okay if we if we are uh, studying 
elastic strain energy only so we can use Hooke's law Hooke's law say that tau is equal to g into strain so putting it here small u will be 0 to sigma y x y g to gamma x y d gamma x y we can integrate this expression it will be 1 over 2 g to gamma x y square or we can again use Hooke's law uh, gamma square is equal to actually gamma is equal to tau divided by g so by putting gamma equal to tau divided by g in the above expression it will be 1 over 2 g tau square divided by g square so g can be cancelled with the square of g so small u or small uh, sustained energy density will be tau xy Div uh, square divided by 2g it is similar to the strain energy density found for normal loading for normal loading it was sigma x square divided by 2e here it is tau x xy square divided by 2g so sigma x is normal stress here tau xy is shear stress e is modulus of elasticity here g is modulus of rigidity so it is a synchronous similar kind of expression so this is strain energy density small u in order to find capital u strain energy so the strain energy capital u is equal to integral of small u into dv so it will be integral of tau xy square divided by 2g into dv okay moving further this is general expression now if we have a shaft subjected to torsional load and if the shaft is a non-uniform shaft and the area is changing consistently so we can use this expression of tau which we have studied in the chapter of torsion chapter number three of this book so u is equal to capital u already we have discussed it is equal to integral of tau xy square divided by 2g into dv putting tau xy equal to t rho over j rho is radius t is torque j is polar moment of inertia so it becomes t square rho square divided by 2g j square again similar to the previous case putting dv equal to dx into da so the above expression becomes capital U equal to integral from 0 to L then integral of area T square rho square over 2G J square into DA DX since except radius all other terms are independent of area so we can keep them out of the integral of uh, keep them out of area integral so this expression becomes integral 0 to l t square divided by 2 g j square to area integral rho square dA into dx this integral of rho square 
dA is equal to J, which is polar moment of inertia. You have studied it in your engineering physics. This J can be cancelled with square of J. So capital U becomes integral from 0 to L T square divided by 2 G J into dx. Okay, this is a general expression for elastic strain energy under shear loading. Okay, if we have a uh, if if we have a uh, uniform shaft like this one under torque T, so we can integrate the above expression. Here the J will be constant because shaft is uniform so the above expression will become by simply integrating the above expression it will be t square l over 2 g j so if we have a uniform cross sectional bar round bar under shaft under torque uh, uh, t so we can use this expression if there is a non uniform bar a non uniform shaft we can use this general expression while using while solving the numerical problems Okay, moving further next uh, we have a example an example problem which is sample problem number 11.2 okay the problem states taking into account only the normal stresses due to bending determine the strain energy of the beam for the loading shown Okay, given is a simply supported beam under load P at a distance A from the left end and distance B from the right end. Total length of the, uh, of the beam is L. Okay, determine the strain energy of the beam for the loading. Strain energy means capital U. For the beams, we have discussed this expression u capital u is equal to integral of moment square divided by 2 ei dx so we have to find moment actually in this beam okay they have not in this problem they have not they have not asked for which specific section section ad or section bd they have just asked the strain energy. It means we need to, to, to find the total strain energy of this beam. So we will first find strain energy in section AD and then in section BD and then we will add them up. For section AD, we can find moment. For section BD, we can find a separate moment. Okay. So let us move further. In part B, what is asked? Evaluate the strain energy. In previous case, we need to determine, we were asked to determine strain energy. So it will be a general expression for strain energy. In the part B, it will be a numerical value of strain energy U by putting the corresponding values of length A, B and E. It is a W1045B. So we will use the appendix from the table, from the book uh, to find the value of I for this beam. Okay. So first we need to uh, draw a, a free body diagram of this beam to calculate a reaction at A and reaction at B, at B. It is simply from our knowledge of statics. So I think the students can calculate the reactions at point A and point B. I will not do it again. You can do it and you will find RA and RB here. RA is equal to PB divided by L. RB is equal to PA divided by L. Okay, now I want to find moment in section AD and then in section BD. So I will section the beam here between A and D and this is our section. I have considered the left side of the section. The length of the section is X. Moment M1 becomes P b by l into x similarly by sectioning the beam between d and b again now we can consider either the left section 
this will be x or the right section let us call it v so we have considered the right section here it is easier to uh, do calculations okay so moment m2 you can do you by yourself the moment m2 becomes p a divided by l into sorry not x it is it is v p a divided by l into v this distance is v the length of this section is v this x and v are two different uh, lengths x is for section ad and v is for section bt so we can say x is between 0 and a and v is between 0 and b v starts from and b and goes to, uh, towards the left side till d and x starts from an a and goes towards the right side till point d okay now we have the moments since u is equal to for beam previously we have studied capital u is equal to integral of moment square divided by 2 ei so i will write the expression here u is equal to integral of moment square divided by 2 ei into dx okay so here we have two moments sorry moment one and moment two so we will use it m1 square from 0 to a plus m2 square from 0 to b and this m2 will be integrated with respect to small v not x okay because for m2 we have used the right section and the length of the section is v okay now we will put values m1 is pb by l into x m2 is pa by l into v okay uh, this 1 over 2 ei is common so i will take it common 1 over 2 ei and both of these from 0 to a pb divided by l into x this moment square so i will take square of this term into dx plus 0 to b p a over l into v to dv okay we can simplify this expression 1 over 2 ei we can open these integrals it will be okay p is constant and l is constant so we can keep p square over l square as constant common here p square over l square and then inside the bracket it will be b square x cube by uh, 3 so integral is 0 to a so it will be a cube by 3 you can do the integration by yourself as well in this term it will be a square v cube by 3 so v is equal to uh, v starts from 0 to b by putting b into v it will be b cube by 3 I hope the students understand the integration steps okay so capital U becomes p square we will simplify these uh, uh, terms it is p square a square b square divided by 6 e i l the students can do the simplification by adding the above terms and cancelling the uh, cancelling some of the terms with each other okay so this is strain energy of this beam under load p 
strain energy of the beam under this load capital U. So part A is solved. In part B, we are asked to find, to evaluate this U. So we will put value of P equal to 14 to 10 power 3 pounds. Length is 12 into 12 inches. A is 3 into 12 inches. B is 9 to 12 inches. These values are in feet. So I have converted into inches by multiplying with 12. E is already in pounds per square inches per square inch and W1045. So we will move to the book table appendix C W1045. If it is not given X or Y axis, so we will next find it around its natural axis, which is X axis in this case, horizontal axis. W1045. If we move here. It is 248 inch power 4 ix. So let us move here. Keep i equal to 248 inch power 4. Move further. Putting all these values of P, length, A, B, E, and I into the expression, we can find u equal to, you can do the calculations by yourself, it will be 3.89 inch into kilopounds. Inch pound is the unit of strain energy. Strain energy is simply work. Work is, uh, work has units of length multiplied by force. So it is length multiplied by force. Okay. Mm, this was the second part of the problem to evaluate U. Moving further, our next topic is strain energy. Okay, we have solved a numerical problem, example problem uh, related to strain energy on the topics of beam. From exercise, I will solve some other uh, problems on the topics of axial loading and shear loading as well. So, we will cover the other topics in exercise problems okay the next topic is strain energy for a general state of stress what is general state of stress general state of stress is a three-dimensional state of stress for example we have a cube and it is under three types of normal stresses And then shear stresses on each face. So we have a total of nine components sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau xy, tau xz, tau yx, tau yz, tau zx, tau zy. This is general state of stress. Previously, under normal and shear loading, we have calculated U, strain energy density, small u, or capital U, for axial loading. For example, uh, here is for axial load, uh, in extraction only and similarly for shear loading for xy plane only we have calculated under shear loading which is integral of uh, sh stress into strain so previously we know that strain energy density is integral of stress into strain for normal stress it is normal stress into strain for shear loading it is shear stress into shear strain so in three dimensions we can simply extend the same equation and we can write it for three dimensions as 1 over 2 normal stress into normal strain in x direction plus normal stress into normal strain in y direction normal stress sorry normal stress into normal strain in z direction similarly shear stress and shear strain to xy plane 
shear stress and shear strain in XZ plane and shear stress and shear strain in YZ plane. Okay. This expression can be uh, rearranged as well and uh, uh, we, uh, we can rewrite this, this expression in terms of uh, principal stresses as well. Okay, if we want to, before that, if we want to write this expression in terms of stresses only, not in terms of strains because now it is in terms of stress and strains both sigma and epsilon tau and gamma so if we use hooke's law generalize hooke's law and we convert all the strains into stresses you can go to chapter number two and see the generalized hooke's law expression for one of them i will write here for example uh, epsilon x is equal to sigma x over e minus nu sigma y over e plus sigma z over e. Similarly, we can use expressions for epsilon y and epsilon z. Similarly, tau xy, uh, sorry, gamma xy is equal to tau xy divided by g. We can use all these expressions here and we can eliminate all the strain terms and write it in, in terms of stress terms only. So the above expression can be rewritten as small u is equal to 1 over 2e. You can do the simplifications. I will write it directly. Sigma x square plus sigma y square plus sigma z square minus 2 times nu into sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma z plus sigma z sigma x plus 1 over 2 g into tau xy square plus tau yz square plus tau zx square now this expression is all in terms of stresses only sigma x sigma y sigma z tau xy tau yz and tau zx okay the first bracket is all uh, contains all normal stresses the second bracket contains all no shear stresses if the shear stresses become zero in some specific case if the shear stresses become zero the all normal stresses will be principal stresses only so let us write this expression in terms of principal stresses only so for, uh, for the cases of principal stresses shear stresses will be zero the above expression can be written in terms of principal stresses strain energy density becomes 1 over 2e sigma a square plus sigma b square plus sigma c square sigma a and sigma b and sigma c are principal stresses minus 2 nu sigma a sigma b plus sigma b sigma c plus sigma c sigma a okay so this is the above expression with normal components only there is no shear component in this expression. Sigma A, Sigma B and Sigma C are principal stresses. Okay. The above expression, this expression, sorry, this expression can be written as UV plus UD. This is small u actually. What is UV and what is UD? UV is change due to uh, sorry, uh, 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 volume, uh, sorry, energy due to volumetric change and UD is energy due to distortion, St uh, energy density due to distortion and energy density due to change in volume. 
so uv i will write it, it directly you can go to your book and you can see the derivation steps of uv and ut uv is actually 1 minus 2 nu divided by 6 e into sigma a plus sigma b plus sigma c square this is due to change in volume okay, a ud is 1 over 12 g into sigma a minus sigma b square plus sigma b minus sigma c square plus sigma c minus sigma a square this is due to distortion distortion is change in shape okay if you add these two terms uv and ud you can get this u so do it manually you will get the above expression you can see how we have got uv and ud in your textbook which is not important the derivations are not important for you just the understanding is important what is this ud actually i wanted to focus on ud ud is distortion energy strain strain energy density due to distortion if you remember previously in chapter number seven we have studied distortion energy theory which was also called von mises theory the distortion uh, the, 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 the the energy stored by the material should not exceed its distortion energy so distortion energy should be less than distortion energy until so uh, achieved by material until yielding this is for tensile specimens or for tensile loading only the distortion energy stored by a material should not exceed the distortion energy capacity of material until yielding point this is actually the basis of von Mises criteria or the distortion energy theory criteria and the distortion energy criteria which we have studied in chapter number seven and maybe you had a question in your mind what is distortion energy so distortion energy is the energy stored by a material until it gets distorted so this is the distortion this was uh, strain energy for general state of stress general state of stress is a three-dimensional state of stress which where we have three normal stresses and six shear stress components and the total distortion the total strain energy density small u has been written in terms of normal and shear stresses and strain or we can directly write it into terms of in terms of stresses only normal and shear stresses if the shear stress is zero the normal stresses will be uh, principal stresses so it can be written in terms of principal stresses it can be divided into volumetric change uh, uh, sorry strain energy due to volume uh, change in volume and strain energy due to distortion okay so we will use this expression which is uh, expression for strain energy density in terms of principal stresses or expression due to strain energy in terms of normal and shear stresses in our numerical problems if we find any numerical problem of this type or we can use this expression as well distortion strain energy if we are given distortion strain energy in the numerical problem so next we have to solve some numerical problems from the exercise uh, i will solve these numerical problems uh, separately in a separate lecture but here i will just introduce we have to solve numerical problem 11.2 11.9 11.11 .11, 12.5 11.33 11.36 .11 these six problems we will solve i will solve it in the next lecture separately after solving these lecture these problems i hope you will understand the topic better until now this was all i will just revise 
the topics again. We started with strain energy. Strain energy is the energy stored by the material while it is deformed. So it is just work done on the structure by applying load and producing deformation in the structure. Strain energy is simply area under the load deformation curve. If it is a ductile material, so we have to divide this area into small areas and then add up all the areas. If it is a linear elastic curve, so it is very easy to find uh, area of a triangle. Similarly, strain energy density is a material property. If we divide the strain energy by volume, so we can eliminate the effect of size. We have derived expression for strain energy uh, until rupture point and until yield point. Strain energy density or area under the stress strain curve until rupture point is called modulus of toughness and area under the stress strain curve until yielding point is modulus of resilience. We have derived expressions for elastic strain energy under axial loading for a non-uniform bar and a uniform bar. Then st elastic strain energy under bending loading we have derived a general expression and then an expression for a cantilever beam with an end load. Then we have found elastic strain energy for shearing stresses for a non-uniform bar and a uniform bar. We have solved an, an example problem on beam to find strain energy. And then we have discussed strain energy for general state of stress. So I hope this was enough. If you have any question, you can contact me on my email address given on my website or you can see this in this lecture on YouTube as well. You can visit my website, Google site. We will meet in some other lecture while I will solve numerical problems for this chapter. Until then, thank you.